Welcome to Veggie Quest. Here I have a nut riding a banana. If you use this little magnifying glass, we can find out that he moves exactly like a knight in chess. My goal is to create a puzzle that takes the longest number of moves for this nut to reach the carrot in a box. So if I maybe have a move here, then 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 here, and then do a little bit of funny doubling back, maybe like here, and then here, and then here, 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 then the carrot. It seems good, but I love how he jumps. Oh, he actually cuts a little earlier there, so that only gets me 12. So I've got to get a bit more creative. What if instead I place the square way out there, forcing him to make it all the way to the edge of the board, then back? Well, it gets me three carrots, and the goal of every puzzle is to get three carrots. Now we got the knight plus a portal. How does this guy work with the portal? Does this count as one move? To like hop in the portal and then through there? That's two moves. His first move is going onto the portal and then he teleports. And then his second move is to the carrot. And if I just let him ride, he does four moves normally. So that's progress. But I feel like I've got to almost force him to go into a portal. I start him here, then move him back. So if I put a box here, he's got to go into this portal. And then he can jump over. Four moves, yes. But what if I then block off these spots for next move? And then have another portal coming out right here. Well, then it'll do a lot of funny jumping. I could block off this spot, forcing him to go to this spot, which then could teleport him here. Now let's just play this out. I think he chose to not move once. His first move was here, and then his second move was not moving at all. That's dirty, but it's smart. Kind of outsmarted me, so I got to think about that a little bit more then. What if I force him to make a lot of moves before going into a portal? With one wall, I could force him to go here. Then I could block off all of these spots to send him into the corner. Well, then after the corner, he's two moves away from winning, so I don't like that. Well, if I block this off and put a portal here, it could start to get interesting. I could slap it down here, forcing a bounce, bounce, a bounce, a bounce. Now, I've got to do more than that. If I block off this, he's forced to go down and then down again, which there could be a portal here. But first, I'll actually block this off, so... He's forced to go into the portal, then like out here. Eventually, I have a portal that actually gets him to the one spot that can get to the carrot. But getting there won't be so simple. Like that? I mean, I don't know. It's still going to be a lot of, or not that many moves. Only seven. One carrot, yes. But I feel like I can still do so much more. I, I need a new way to look at this. What's the most amount of moves I can force this to make while still avoiding the carrot in the box? So you'd have to go here, then here. And I block this off, then force him to go here, then here. I could then block off both of these, forcing him to go here, which then forces him to go here, which then forces here, and then here. Here is the first portal spot. Oh, I would also need to block off this spot. So portal spot here, and the portal comes out here. So then he jumps around for eight moves, and that's still not even close to efficient. And actually, I guess I don't even need the portal at all. This is just eight moves, portal or no portal. Technically, I don't need this wall. Do I need this wall? No. Do I need this wall? Yes. What about this wall? No. Still eights. This is good. Do I need this wall? Yes. So this is all the walls I need for eight. Now, what can I do with that? I guess I could at least force it to be nine by adding that dummy little portal there. <laughs> but it's still one carrot. Oh, well, maybe that's what I need to start doing. So if I block this off... Could I do a little dummy portal here, forcing an extra step? Yes, I can. What about here to here? Uh, but block that off. Still 10. Move, 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 dummy. And then it just hops in there. Perfectly fine, as if nothing ever happened. Damn it. I'm pretty sure the solution is a third dummy portal, but it's not with this route. What if from the center square, I'm forced to go down instead of up? Does that change anything? Well, then I could have a dummy warp here and have to block this off. Does that work? Dummy? Dummy? Ah, uh, no, because it just jumps directly there. Damn it. Okay, weirdly, what if I took the central dummy warp and moved it down here? That might not seem like it does anything, but that could suddenly make this spot a valid location for a dummy warp. Oh, 
Yes, dummy warp one, dummy warp two. And then the moves, 11 isn't three carrots, but do I have another dummy warp spot? What if I introduced another dummy warp from here to here? Dummy warp one, two, three, and then all the moves and then four. That's still not enough. Oh, I'm finding so many dummies. Uh, and that covers every square on the board. Yeah, I can't get it. There's no more dummy portals with this route. And if I was to do it, I'd probably need to start from scratch, which I don't want to do. So next puzzle. Oh God, Wizard Mike and the banana. Both of these guys can jump over walls, but you know, it's not really necessary. Right now, Wizard Mike seems to be the main thing slowing us down. Now I would love to just create a massive Wizard Mike maze, but then our banana boy is gonna be stuck. So I could carve out a square for the banana boy, but then Mike can teleport up. So I gotta like block off Mike, at least from teleporting up. So banana goes here, then here, then here, then here. Then I can do something similar here. So Mike teleports twice in the middle. Now that is faster moving, but that does help out quite a bit. That's two carrots already. What if I did a slightly different maze that maybe only had Mike teleport once? Yeah, that would certainly be nice. What about this kind of start? Because Mike can't actually go here because he has nowhere to escape afterwards. Banana can go here and then somewhere. <laughs> I'm not sure where yet. The only difference is now I can get rid of this square, which doesn't look like it does anything. How would I work backwards? What if instead of this, I set up the banana to get the close carrot? So Wizard Mike has to go farther. So I get rid of this. Well, then I can have the banana go bam, 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 bam here. Wait, how does the banana get here? It's a great question. Oh, if only these two are like swapped around, unless a wizard can swap them. No. Well, the best I could do is getting rid of this one and then blocking this here. Wizard Mike still jumps twice, but he does have to move one square farther. Oh, and that's it. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking I'd have to do more. Oh, the night plus water. What the water tile does is after moving on it, it shifts you in the direction that it's pointing. It does not change shifts. So if he moves here, he does not slide off the board, uh, but sliding off the board in a single move is a thing and would kill the guy. Therefore he wouldn't do it. So I could like have both waters send him to the same spot or both waters push him towards the edge of the board. I kind of like that more because that kind of forces him sort of towards the corner. So let's say he's going up first. He's here. I could have both of these waters send him left, including uh, actually if he goes down here, send him left. So he's like still forced towards the corner. Then I can mirror it. If he's here, I can have all of these force him towards the edge of the corner. So realistically, he's going to end up either here or here because that's the closest to the carrot. So no matter where he goes, then I would want to have him be forced towards the corner or towards somewhere he could have already gone or somewhere he already did go. So then same with here, force towards the corner and this spot. So then he's going to be either here or here again, force towards the corner, then mirrored with that. So realistically, he's going to be either here or here. So then because both of these squares are the only way he can get to the carrot, the only way he can actually make it to the carrot is if he's directly shifted onto one of them. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Realistically, he's going to willingly move to either here or here. So this is where the fun begins. If I consolidate him to this one spot, I kind of almost want to get a baseline just to know what I'm working with. Like another shift will make him win soon. I just want to plan it out that seven and this almost to one carrot. Now, instead of directly shifting him onto there, I want to only get him on the path that can get him to one of these. Maybe like back at the beginning, except that I don't know if I can do that. Maybe I could just stall it out by moving him to like the edges, you know, just kind of keep him towards the corners. So he'll end up like here, but then he'll just move to somewhere where he's been before. So I don't like that so much. What if I don't shift him at all and force him to willingly move here? I could directly shift him onto this square, which is new. This is a new square that he'd end on. He would have to move here. Well, hold up. He could always willingly move here earlier from here. So actually, if I want, I could force him off the board, making this path impossible. So he'd have to go from here to here, shift, then to here, which would then shift him onto here, which is a totally new spot. 
but that doesn't mean anything. Well, what if I just shift it onto here? How many carrots is this? That is one carrot. Eight moves, gross. What if I say not this space? You know what, you can't go up. What if I choose from here for you to go here? Wouldn't I be able to get here from here? Well, no, if I do this, I could make the only way to access this square so far would be from here, which could then launch him this way. Hold on, I can send him this way. Ending on this square, this is a new place to end. And then he's not gonna willingly go to the corner, but he might willingly go here, which is a new square. I guess I could shift them right, landing him on a new square. Then I suppose he could jump here. I could send him up and take this, shift it, so that he would go here for the first time ever. Or even better, shift down, because I feel like it. Maybe it actually doesn't matter whether I shift up or down. Because I was thinking if I shift up, I could then go here and shift into here, but I could always come from here to here as well. But this does at least get me nine. I just want to make some progress. No, damn you. Not gonna lie, I think I'm gonna settle for one carrot. Levels like this are a bit more tedious than fun. Bunnies can provide some interesting solutions. They're basically just enemies that our night boy can't touch. Although I'm sure he can jump over a bunny. Now, generally with levels like this, the banana nut will spend most of his time waiting for his time to strike. And when he does strike, it'll be a low number of moves, but it'll take forever for him to get to that point. Now, what I can do is almost set up like a bunny portal chain, kind of like this, that has a ton of bunnies. And you'll see what they do is they just kind of go in, <laughs> you know, just like that. But what if like one of the bunnies wasn't there? Then there'd be a gap, and actually, eventually, he can just hop through the gap once he spots his opportunity. Now, this is the longest we have to wait for the sequence. 10 moves. But, you see, his next move was forced to be here. So then, what if there had to be a massive wait to get to this spot? But, it was on a different timer from the first one, so you don't just have to wait this timer plus this timer, you have to wait this timer times this timer. So here we have 10 bunnies in one gap. What if I had nine bunnies in one gap? Or actually, even better, I could have 11 bunnies in one gap, thanks to the little bit of extra space here. So this is the spot. It's gonna be open in 10 moves. Or no, not in 10 moves. How about I just put a bunch of bunnies down and just leaving a gap in mind and see how long it takes? That is impossible? There will never be a time where the stars align. Oh, wait, it is the same. Like, this is still 10 bunnies in one gap because of the carrot. In that case, we got to go nine bunnies, one gap. I'll just put a funny little wall here. Bunny, bunny. Okay, let's try this. This is going to take a lot longer before anything happens. And there he goes, 24. So what I do then is take the second one and just switch around the gap until I get the maximum distance. Now it's 35. Moving the gap in this direction seems to increase it by nine. So what if I increase it or move it twice in that direction? Well, then our dude has to wait a long time. We're looking at a cool 57, which is only one carrot still. So what if I move it in that direction twice again? Now it's 46. It got shorter. And if you noticed, he took a different route, which actually uh, might mean I have to change up my strat a little bit. Because we can move in two different ways, there's two different gaps that can materialize. Let me at least see that, uh, if this is the maximum gap... No, that's also 46. So we got 57 as our max with this setup. So what if I change things up a bit? What if I actually just block off one of his spots? So that, um... We have one path that's just shorter? Shorter path, yes. Then what I want to do with these bunnies is actually... I was gonna say use verticality. But actually, I probably should just be doing that in general. I should be having as few portals as possible, because if you notice, one of the portals has to be kept free just so the bunnies aren't stacking. So ideally, there should be as few portal spots as possible. If I block off these two spots and force them to go here than here, what I could do is have bunnies that travel like the full distance in two separate columns. And here is a bit more straightforward of how I set it up. Basically, I just need to start with this being the gap, and that takes the longest. As you can see, he's got to wait a full rotation for that to go. And then here, I'll just go until it's the longest possible. This is allegedly impossible. Well, one of the cycles is 12 long, and the other is 9 long. So because they have a common divisor, 
it's possible that they'll never have the right alignment. So actually, I was gonna try one other idea, and this is a weird one, but not that weird. What if I blocked off this square instead? That would mean this portal would be more like that. And then this down here wouldn't make any sense, but this would be a valid portal. So then here, the path is 11 long, which doesn't divide cleanly into anything. And also I have a little bit extra space for one more little bunny spot down here. It's not much, but it's honest work. And how many bunnies does this total? This is a 10 long. So two different loops, an 11 and a 10 long. And basically I'm just gonna adjust the second one until it's long as possible. Uh, so that's 35. Let's put the gap maybe this way. Makes it longer, good. Send it two this way. Oh, now we're at two carat territory. 68. Move the gap another two this way. Because I'm thinking I'm looking at about 110, maybe a little more. Oh, come on, come on. Big number, 90, looking good. We can do another two more and I believe that should be max. If not, it'll at least be very close. That is three carats, looking good, 112. Uh, let me just double check, make sure I can't shift it one more because sometimes he can go over by a lot. No, that one's very short. So 112 is the max I've got. I like these levels more because they're more math based. It feels like you can break the problem down to a more approachable problem instead of just trying things. This is fun. Oh God, it's water again. But the only thing I can actually do is place walls. So that might be interesting. I guess actually if I want to win, I have to block off this. So you can go from here or land on here, but not be shifted down. I almost wonder if I should work backwards uh, from that. So to get here, I'm gonna force him to come from like way up here possibly, or here, so I would block off these three. Wait, I could place a wall over the water? That's weird. Okay, also he just got six. So if he then comes from here, that could be shifted down from here, or it be co could be coming from this. I'll block off this one. I'd prefer him to be shifted down from here. Um, well, I think I'd also have to block this off. To get here, I kind of want him to have come from here, which could then have him come from here and not here. So I also could go bam, 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 which is still fine. So fr from here, I'd have to come from here which could involve being shifted down, yes. So from here, I could go to here. How do I get here? I could come from here, and that would come from here. Bam, 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 something like that, which is how many? Oh, I missed this skip. Oh, let me block this off real quick. Now you gotta go a little longer for nine and one carat. What if I block this off? So first move would have to be here. Then I'd have to go like, bam, bam, bam. Well, that adds at least a little bit, right? 10. I could then block this for it to be even longer by one, two carats, nice. What if I block this? Does that add one? No, it makes it 10, it's bad. What if I block this? Then it's gotta go to the corner, but it goes up top, so that's no good. Okay, that's good enough for me. This section, unfortunately, wasn't my favorite. Hopefully the next section brings more of the puzzles that I enjoy in this game, and that will hopefully come next time. So thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you all in the next video. Have a wonderful day and peace.